Good afternoon. Welcome to the public information meeting for CFX's Southport Connector Expressway Project Development and Environment, or PD&E study. This meeting and study are being conducted without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns relative to compliance by CFX with Title VI may do so by contacting me, Kathy Putnam, via the information on this slide. All inquiries or complaints will be handled according to CFX procedure and in a prompt and courteous manner. Over the past 10 to 12 years, six studies have been conducted and each has identified the Cypress Parkway corridor as the most feasible location for this project. The most recent history of this project dates to 2010, when Osceola County adopted the South Lake Toho Master Plan as part of its Long Range Comprehensive Land Use Plan. The South Lake Toho Master Plan serves as a blueprint to guide future land use, transportation, and environmental planning in this area of Osceola County. An alignment study for the Southport Connector Expressway was conducted by the county as part of the South Lake Toho Master Plan and identified the location of the proposed roadway along the southern boundary of the Master Plan study area. This alignment study and proposed location for the Southport Connector Expressway served as input into the Osceola County Expressway Master Plan Report adopted in 2013 and was also evaluated as part of the Florida Department of Transportation's Alternative Corridor Evaluation, or ACE, report completed in 2015. The Southport Connector Concept Feasibility and Mobility, or CF&M study, was conducted by CFX as part of the agreement to merge the Osceola County Expressway Authority with CFX. The F.ACE report was reviewed during the CFX CFNM study and the viable corridors recommended by F.in 2015 were generally retained by CFX for further evaluation in the PD&E study which started in September 2020. The purpose of the Southport Connector PD&E study is to address the transportation needs of this growing portion of Central Florida. The project goals and objectives are to improve connections to existing roadways, enhance mobility to accommodate regional growth in population and employment, relieve traffic congestion along Cypress Parkway and the surrounding roadway network, provide opportunities to accommodate transit and other multimodal modes of transportation, and promote regional system connectivity and enhance evacuation and emergency management in the area. The PD&E study process allows for a blending of preliminary engineering, environmental analysis, and public involvement and includes the development of several engineering and environmental documents to support the decision-making process. This is a systematic evaluation of feasible alternatives that results in the identification of a preferred alternative. Stakeholder input is an important aspect of the PD&E study process as the alternatives are examined to develop feasible solutions that meet the project purpose and need while minimizing impacts to social, natural, cultural, and physical resources. The environmental analysis will include measures to avoid and or minimize impacts. The Southport Connector Expressway is a proposed limited access roadway extending approximately 15 miles from the existing Poinciana Parkway at Coa Street to Canoe Creek Road. On the west side of the project, 
The proposed expressway begins at Point Sienna Parkway, which intersects with Cypress Parkway. The Southport Connector Expressway would be co-located with the existing Cypress Parkway for approximately three and a half miles. To the east of Pleasant Hill Road, the proposed expressway crosses the Reedy Creek ecosystem before traveling eastward to Canoe Creek Road. This graphic maps wetlands, floodplains, federal and state listed species habitat, public lands, conservation easements, and large scale managed lands such as the Disney Wilderness Preserve and Southport Mitigation Bank. Listed species observed during limited field surveys in May of this year were also added to the map, including bald eagle nests and observations, a sandhill crane nest, an osprey nest, a roseate spoonbill siding, and a wading bird rookery. Social constraints include the boundaries of the East Lake Toho Master Plan and the addition of the Westview Conceptual Site Plan located west of Point Sienna Parkway and south of Coa Street. The current approved land use totals within and next to the revised study area include the following. Over 106,000 dwelling units, including single and multifamily units. Over 34 million square feet of commercial and office space, and all that on a total of more than 45,000 acres. These totals represent development potential within Sola Vida Grand, Bella Lago, East Lake Toho, South Lake Toho, Green Island, and Harmony West. Individual site plan submittals, like Westview, which is part of Sola Vida Grand, are occurring at a rapid pace, with many of the new development proposals being made within Sola Vida, as well as East Lake Toho. The proposed expressway corridor runs through the developed commercial area on the west side and through area that is currently rural on the east. Future residential and commercial development is planned for the east side. On the west side, the study team has been working on conceptual designs along the Cypress Parkway segment. This work includes developing renderings for the proposed typical section within the existing right-of-way along Cypress Parkway, a traffic analysis for existing conditions and the future scenario should the expressway be built, updating the concept design plans from the previous concept study, including options for the interchanges at Coa Street and Pleasant Hill Road, as well as evaluating alternative locations for access points, or slip ramps, between the expressway and Cypress Parkway, providing overpasses and turn lanes at cross streets, and addressing community comments. This is a conceptual rendering of the proposed expressway within the center of the existing Cypress Parkway right-of-way. Based on preliminary traffic forecasts, six travel lanes, that is three in each direction, will be provided on the expressway section. Open bridge spans or overpasses will be provided at intersecting side streets to allow local access and circulation underneath the expressway, like what's being built today along State Road 46 and the Wakiva Parkway in Seminole County. These bridge locations include Laurel Avenue, Sola Vida Boulevard, Marigold Avenue, Cypress Branch Drive, Cypress Drive, and Dover Plum Avenue. With two lanes in each direction on either side of the expressway, Cypress Parkway will continue to provide access to local neighborhoods and community facilities along the existing right-of-way. A potential multi-use path is proposed along the outside edge of the eastbound and westbound travel lanes along Cypress Parkway. The space in between the expressway and Cypress Parkway will vary 
and will be used to develop access ramps between the Expressway and Cypress Parkway and to accommodate turn lanes at intersecting side streets. It will also provide room for drainage features and utilities. The daily traffic from various traffic count locations was used to develop existing traffic volumes for the Cypress Parkway segment of the project. As you can see, traffic volumes increase from west to east, and east of Marigold Avenue, the daily volumes increase significantly. Shown here are the forecasted traffic numbers Assuming that the Southport Connector Expressway is not built, we call this the no-build scenario. This forecast was developed using the assumption that Cypress Parkway remains a four-lane road, Poinciana Parkway is reconstructed as a four-lane expressway and extended to an interchange with I-4 and State Road 429. This scenario assumes half of the development contained in the South Lake Toho Conceptual Master Plan occurs over the next 20 years. This shows the traffic forecast for the build scenario, that is, that the Southport Connector Expressway is built. This forecast was developed using the assumption that Poinciana Parkway is reconstructed as a four-lane expressway and extended to an interchange with I-4 and State Road 429. And all of the development contained in the South Lake Toho Conceptual Master Plan occurs over the next two decades. Preliminary conceptual designs are being developed along the Cypress Parkway segment from the Poinciana Parkway at Coa Street Interchange to Pleasant Hill Road. At the proposed Poinciana Parkway Interchange with Coa Street, we are evaluating alternatives for the ramp access to and from Cypress Parkway at Sola Vida Boulevard. The alternatives analysis in this area considers the additional traffic anticipated from the new West View development west of Poinciana Parkway at Coa Street. Along the Cypress Parkway segment, we are evaluating the slip ramps or access points to and from Cypress Parkway and the expressway in order to maximize opportunities for local traffic to access the expressway. It's important for us to also consider emergency services access to and from the expressway for the Polk County Fire Station and Poinciana Medical Center. The conceptual design evaluation along the Cypress Parkway segment considers the physical engineering factors such as the vertical profile or how high the road is and the distance needed to transition between Cypress Parkway and the expressway. We must also consider safety aspects, including sight distance and weaving, that is, making sure there's enough room for traffic to merge on and off between the expressway and Cypress Parkway. Finally, we're considering the turn lanes at all intersections along Cypress Parkway and how traffic will flow from one side to the other and underneath the expressway. The eastern segment of the Southport Connector Expressway starts east of where Cypress Parkway joins Pleasant Hill Road. Now, let's talk about the eastern segment east of Pleasant Hill Road. Based on stakeholder input and the opportunities to avoid and or minimize environmental impacts, Refinements have been made to the corridors identified in the previous concept study. We have also developed renderings for the bridge crossing alternatives for the Reedy Creek and Lake Toho crossings, as well as the expressway mainline. Finally, this portion of the presentation will include a summary of the comparative evaluation of alternatives being considered. This evaluation considers the project purpose and need, an inventory of project-related impacts, 
and a weighted ranking and scoring of each alternative. East of Pleasant Hill Road, a total of six alternative corridors were developed in the previous CFX Concept Feasibility and Mobility, or CF&M study. All of these were located south of Lake Toho, and all were advanced to the PD&E study phase. Environmental impacts and project costs were documented in the final CF&M study final report published in May of 2018. It was noted in the early stages of the current PD&E study that the alignments of these six alternatives had several common points. One of the first steps in the refinement process was to consolidate these common areas and modify the alternatives accordingly. In addition, we considered initial stakeholder input as well as updated environmental conditions based on field reviews. As a result of this refinement, the study team identified three feasible alternatives to move into a more detailed analysis. And with input from our advisory groups, a fourth alternative, crossing Lake Toho, is being considered. The current study corridors are shown here with respect to wetlands, floodplains, updated listed species observations, and the future roadway and trails network as documented in the current adopted Osceola County Comprehensive Land Use Plan. Now I'll provide a brief description of each corridor location. Alternative 2000, the Green Line, is the northernmost alternative and is representative of FDOT's Corridor No. 2, which crosses Lake Toho. This alternative would tie into the turnpike near the new Nolte Road interchange north of Kissimmee Park Road. Alternative 3000, the Orange Line, is located south of and parallel to the existing Southport Road and represents the CF&M Corridor No. 300. Alternative 4000, the Yellow Line, is centrally located within the study area south of Lake Toho and represents the CF&M Corridor No. 400. Alternative 7000, the Purple Line, is the southernmost alternative and represents the CFNM corridor number 700, as well as the future corridor shown in the Osceola County's South Lake Toho Master Plan. Alternatives 3000, 4000, and 7000 tie into the turnpike about halfway between the Canoe Creek Service Plaza to the south and the Friars Cove Road overpass to the north. In addition, all these alternatives continue east to a connection with Canoe Creek Road. We have opportunities to reduce project impacts in certain areas, such as the proposed Reedy Creek and Lake Toho Bridge crossings. This rendering shows how the proposed typical section might look in these environmentally sensitive areas. As you can see, the project footprint could be reduced in these areas. It's important to note that the proposed elevated bridge across Reedy Creek would be more than half a mile long. It would be designed to accommodate wildlife movements in this critical portion of the study area, which includes the Disney Wilderness Preserve and Southport Mitigation Bank, both of which are next to Reedy Creek and in our study area. This is the typical section used on CFX's new expressway projects. This typical section includes an initial four-lane expressway, two lanes in each direction, with the opportunity for expansion as warranted by future travel demand. We are now going to discuss the comparative evaluation of the project alternatives east of Pleasant Hill Road. This evaluation includes a three-step process. The first step considers how each alternative addresses the project purpose and need. 
The second step involves a traditional comparison of potential project impacts and cost. The third step includes a weighted scoring or ranking of each alternative considered. The factors constituting the project need include systems linkage, regional connectivity and mobility, social and economic needs, capacity constraints such as lack of right-of-way, consistency with adopted transportation plans, multimodal opportunities, and safety and evacuation support. Using these factors, a value assessment was used to rate each alternative with values ranging from none, that is zero, to good, or three. The Cypress Parkway segment and alternatives south of Lake Toho scored the highest in this analysis because they represent the most direct routes in terms of overall system linkage and regional connectivity. Other factors affecting the scoring include consistency with adopted long-range plans, ability for roadway expansion, and evacuation support. It should be noted that in order to assess Alternative 2000, the Cross Lake Toho route, we considered using Florida's turnpike from the point where Alternative 2000 ends near Kissimmee Park Road south to the proposed systems interchange north of the Canoe Creek Service Plaza. This enabled Alternative 2000 to be equally considered relative to travel service, logical endpoint, overall system linkage, and regional connectivity. The next step in the evaluation process involved a traditional comparison of potential project impacts and costs. A color-coded system of red, yellow, and green illustrates the levels of impact of each alternative in each resource category. Red represents a high level of impact. Yellow is medium, and green is relatively low when compared to other alternatives. For this impacts matrix, the values associated with Alternative 2000, the Cross Lake Toho route, do not consider the added cost and impact of using the turnpike between Kissimmee Park Road and the proposed systems interchange south of Friars Cove Road. These additional impacts would include the cost of widening nearly five miles of the Turnpike Main Line, as well as impacts to wetlands, floodplains, and other environmental features within and next to the Florida Turnpike right-of-way. The third step in the evaluation involved a weighted scoring or ranking of each alternative considered. The weighted evaluation uses key criteria to focus on factors that make a difference or influence the overall decision-making process. The weighted values of these key criteria are shown across the top of the matrix with the sum equal to 100. Subfactors within each main criteria category were identified. An assessment was then performed to compare and rank each alternative in each criterion. In addition, ranking designations were added. If a certain factor was considered substantially positive or represented the best of the alternatives, then a double plus sign was assigned with a corresponding value of 1. If the factor was considered generally negative or was the worst alternative considered, then a double negative sign with a corresponding value of 0 0.2 was assigned. This shows the first portion of the weighted evaluation matrix and includes the assessment of the engineering, social, and natural environment criteria for all alternatives considered east of Pleasant Hill Road. Commentary has been added to the table to explain the assessment. 
and this shows the second portion of the weighted evaluation matrix, including the assessment of the remaining criteria, physical environment, planning consistency, and estimated project costs. Again, commentary has been added to the table. The corridor analysis conducted to date is currently being documented in the Alternative Corridor Evaluation Report. Your input on the results of the corridor analysis is important and will be included in the study documentation. Following this public information meeting, we anticipate holding a second public meeting in early 2022 to present more detailed information and allow more opportunities for public and agency input. We anticipate a public hearing would be held in the fall of 2022 to present a preferred alternative. We appreciate this opportunity to present this study to you today. After today's meeting, please direct any comments or questions to me, Kathy Putnam, or Ralph Beauvais. A study web page has also been created on the CFX website under PD&E Studies, with the link shown here. On behalf of CFX, thank you for attending this public information meeting.